hello guys you're welcome back to my channel hope you guys are feeling good my name is bukumi bk crown so the title of this video is what did allah say about the muslim and jews in the quran by ahmed did that but before we go ahead guys i would love to apologize for a video i actually reacted to i never knew the guy did something different titled death of prophet muhammad so please forgive me for that so let's watch what did allah say about the muslim and jews in the quran by ahmed did that so let's watch guys I read to you a small segment of a verse from Surah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There is a chapter in the Holy Quran and the title of the chapter is Muhammad. If you look at an index like the Quran I have in my hand by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, if you have that Quran, if you open the index just like a dictionary and the M you'll find the word Muhammad and it will tell you it is chapter number 47 wow. and in that chapter 47 the last verse chapter th uh, verse 38 I have quoted to you the last segment of the last verse I repeat Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa in tatawallaw yastabdil qawman ghayrakum Allah is addressing us Muslims that, O oh, you Muslims, if you turn back from the duties and responsibilities which Allah has imposed on you for being the khaira ummatin, the best of people. See, Allah describes us, He says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of people evolved for mankind. What makes you the best of people? Is it because some of us claim Arab blood in us or some claim to be Pakistanis or Pathans, Afghanis and some from West Africa? What makes us great? What gives us this honor and this privilege being the Khaira Ummatin, the best of people? The thing that makes us the Khaira Ummatin is Allah says, Ta'muruna bil ma'arufi wa tanhawna anil munkar because you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong. And you believe in Allah. If these are your qualities, then you are the best of people. If you are the best of people, then this honor also puts upon us certain responsibilities. There is no honor without responsibility. The Imam of the Masjid carries with him certain responsibilities. The mayor of a town carries with him certain responsibilities. The manager or director of an institution carries with him certain responsibility. So there is no honor without responsibility. If Allah puts upon us this honor of being the best of people, it also carries with it certain responsibility. And that responsibility is that we are to share this honor with others. And in the first instance, the very first people Allah Ta'ala wants us to share this with are the Jews and the Christians. In that very verse, Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lil nas, ta'muruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. And he continues, Walau amana ahlul kitabi lakana khairan lahum. But if the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, if they hearken to this message, the message of Al-Quran, it will be better for them. In other words, it will be better for you. Minhumul mu'minuna. Among them there are mu'min, faithful people. Among the Jews and the Christians, Allah says, there are good people. I didn't want to say that. You wouldn't like to hear that. But this is what Allah says. Minhumul mu'minuna. Wa aktaruhumul fasikun. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. Now we are to share this honor and this privilege with these people, with the rest of mankind, the whole of mankind. But in the first instance, the Jews and the Christians were prepared for this message. Allah Ta'ala sent prophets after prophets to them. We name them. Hazrat Musa Moses. Hazrat Dawud Salam, 
Prophet David, Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam, Solomon, Hazrat Isaac alayhi salam, Isaac, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus. All these were Jewish prophets. All the prophets, most of our give our children Muslims these names, Musa, Dawood, Suleiman, Ishaq, all these are Jewish names. Allah chose them in the first instance. But he, he, he is carrying out an inexorable law of his own that once he selects you, he chooses you for certain responsibilities, for certain position of honor, and if you do not carry it out your responsibilities, then he says, Yastabdil Qawman Ghayrakum. He will substitute in your place another people. Summa layakun wa mtalakun. Then they won't be like you. So in the religious history of mankind, Allah Bari Ta'ala chose the Jew. Wow. As I named some of the Jewish prophets. Then among the four heavenly books, which we claim to believe in. We say we believe in the Torah, we believe in the Zabur, we believe in the Injil, and we believe in the Furqan. Furqan is the Holy Quran. Among these four books, 75% are Jewish books, given to Jewish prophets. Torah was given to Hazrat Musa a Jew. Zabur was given to Hazrat Dawud a Jew. Injil was given to Hazrat Isa a Jew. Jew, Jew, Jew. Seventy-five percent of the heavenly books that we affirm we believe in are Jewish books, sent to the Jews. But Allah's law, Allah chooses the people for a certain purpose. See, He chose the Bani Israel. As He says, Ya Bani Israel, askuru na'mati allati anamtu alaykum. So, O children of Israel, remember the special favors which I did unto you. Wa anni faddaltukum ala alameen. That I preferred you above all the peoples of the earth for my special favors. He chose them. But they didn't carry out their responsibilities. They made the religion a racial religion. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. They don't want you. So, a Jew among the Jews, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, according to the Christian record, he's telling the Jews, he says, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. You don't fulfill your obligations. You don't produce fruits. Then Allah will take away that honor, that privilege, and give it, give it to somebody else. And whenever he does that, Allah bari ta'ala, when he does that, when he substitutes one people by another, it is usually the people you look down upon. He makes them to sit on your head. This is his way. You see, the Jews were looking down upon the Arabs, their cousins. They say that Father Abraham had two wives, Sarah and Hajra. The children of Sarah are the Bani Israel, the Jews. And they say that the Arabs are the children of Hagar, Bibi Hajra. They say Hagar, they call her children Hagarines. Now they call Islam Hagarism. These are new, new terms that are inventing to hurt our feelings. They call the Arabs Hagarines and, Islam, and the Muslims as uh, Islam as Hagarism. This is in the Christian literature. People that they look down, down upon. That these Arabs are the children of Hajra, who was, they say, a bond woman, a slave woman, a woman from Africa. Actually, she was a princess of Egypt. But the Jews, in their hatred for their cousins, they label, they have been labeling the other prophets and their progeny, and they will not leave out their Arab cousins. So they so these are the children of the bond woman. Oh wow! He says seventy percent of the um, Quran books are Jewish book, and the one thing I took from his video is the fact that he said that Christians, like we have some good Christians out there, and he also said something that actually you know drew my attention. He said honor leads to honor leads to respect. It's when you honor someone before they will give you respect. So um, it was really nice to hear this book of Quran, him talking about some prophet of God. He said something that before God can use you, he's somebody that you don't expect. The least person is the person God uses for his work. And it's true. 
you don't have to be qualified you don't have to go to school before god will choose you yeah god choose the least expected and rise them up and it was really nice to hear of you know this beautiful thing in the quran what quran have to say about muslim and christian and wow mind-blowing thank you for watching guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment and i'll see you in the next one stay blessed bye